Hey, I'm Creed with Defiant Fit. So I just wrapped up a, a series of just four sets of uh, inclined dumbbell flies. And I've got a really unique way of doing these and I wanna to try to explain it to you. After this little introduction, uh, of course you'll get to see the full workout or at least uh, a fair amount of it. When I'm doing these, the, the bench itself is inclined not at a 45 degree angle, but probably something closer to 20, 25 degree angles, what I'm guessing, somewhere between flat and 45, okay? I don't think you need to go to 45. I think it would load the shoulders and we're trying to work the chest. This will be the hardest part to explain to you. So you're at an incline. As I'm going down, my hands are going out in this direction so that they're almost at a, a 45 degree angle facing upward. And what I find is I can really isolate and load the chest a lot. I've spent my life doing your standard flies and I've spent my life with my shoulders hurting almost all the time. And I think the standard motion, uh, it just purposefully loads that front shoulder. There's not much you can do about it. Now I'm going slightly down as I do this. As I come up, my hands are naturally rotating about 45 degrees the other way. So at the bottom, I'm here. At the top, I'm here. And it's not like you do it all at once. It's just as you're moving and you find that super spot down at the bottom that says, oh man, that chest fills everything and, and my, my shoulders fill almost nothing. And then as you squeeze up, and so you're not doing this, you're squeezing up through the chest, you'll naturally rotate. Now, if that makes any sense to you, hopefully, and you can remember it, let me grab a little baby dumbbell. There's two other things I'm doing that are quite different to get the, uh, the shoulder joints protected. That dumbbell handle rides in my palm like this. Not like a standard, it's coming across the hand and just setting up against here as uh, the weights are moving. So it's almost kind of coming across the lifeline, I think, I don't know. I think that's supposed to be the lifeline, right? So it's an angle. I keep a relaxed grip. Relaxed being at the bottom, my hand is pretty much open. And I advise you as you come up to eventually give it a little grip when you get above your face because the old 30 pound, 40 pound, 50 pound dumbbell in your face hurts. So just avoid that. So we've talked about being here and here. We've talked about this special little grip I use. The last thing that I do is I get my, my hand closer to this edge than this. So it's closer to the thumb side than the back uh, outer edge of the palm. And I literally let the weight angle away. And so this tail, as I'm going up and down, is not flat and horizontal. It has dropped down. And I know all that sounds like a whole lot, and it sounds a little bit crazy. Uh, try it. Just try it. Uh, start off with some light weight so you can warm up. Now you're on an incline, say 20, two degrees, split the difference. You're gonna come down. Oh, and you can get just a huge stretch and it's not grinding against the shoulders. I try the same thing here. I can't go as far and it's already loading the shoulder joint pretty hard. Here, I can do it completely. And if you squeeze up through the chest, instead of just, you know, you're squeezing up, 
Think about it, your body's made to move that way. Your, your body doesn't naturally want to do this, but it's happy to do this all day long. Maybe not all day long, but certainly for four sets. And so you come down and you just let it naturally rotate it as you bring it up above your face. You continue. The bar is riding across the palm at an angle and the outer edge of that dumbbell is dropping off. So they're not even. One's lower than the other. The outside edge is lower. And to show you how well this works, again, start with a light weight, come down. And when you start to feel like a little bit of a pinch in the shoulders, let that outer edge drop a little more. And there's some kind of magic in those angles and not squeezing and loading the arms and shoulders that just light up the chest. You don't feel like you're getting the same workout as you did here during the workout. But the next one and two days afterwards, you're going to find some soreness you haven't felt in a long time. Just give it a try. I start off now with flies, right? We all were taught probably uh, bench and then flies and then maybe something else, right? Think about it. When you're trying to bench press, how much can you really load the chest? Go ahead, go right here. Try to squeeze the chest. Now go here. It's completely different. The chest is made to kind of move in that direction, coming at you like this. It's not really meant to do that. And so if I fry my chest out on flies, and I do, because I take each set to exhaustion, uh, I don't get to lift very much on my dumbbell bench, but I don't care because my chest is already throttled and I probably don't even need that bench, although we're gonna do that next. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'll edit and we'll go through the, uh, the exercise next. So here in the beginning, let's focus a little bit on the form, the motion, the muscle group, and just focusing on that muscle group. Here you see the uh, incline of the bench I'm using, and I'm guessing it's about 20 degrees. Now our goal is, of course, to focus 100% on the chest, but it's a compound exercise. The shoulders and triceps are going to feel some of the, uh, the exertion, but we're really trying to make the chest feel it. And that's why I'm rotating those dumbbells. Here at the top, about 45 degrees one way, and down at the bottom, I'm kind of rotating a little bit past parallel, not quite 45 in the opposite direction, but here you'll be able to see it a little bit better. And at the same time, the part of the dumbbell that's closest to my waist, I'm allowing that to drop down a little bit. And I find that this gives me a really good focus on the chest and also kind of takes the shoulders out of it a lot. And I'm getting really good uh, results as far as feeling it in the chest and getting quite sore the next day. Again, here you can get an idea of that rotation of the dumbbells and how that uh, tail closest to my hip drops down. Now here's an alternative style. If you're not quite comfortable with that rotation at the bottom, at least consider using this neutral grip with that one tail dropping down starting here and if this uh, doesn't feel quite right you're still loading the shoulders too much consider going to the one that we just talked about the style that we talked about here let's run through cadence squeezing the muscle group and feeling it the pause and just control control i am moving at two three seconds per motion up and down at the bottom there's going to be a half second pause you look, you feel for a load. You're, you're trying to feel a really big load through the chest and ignore or remove the shoulders and triceps. And then at the top, a little tiny pause, and then you feel that all the way down. You let that chest act like a big elastic break as it comes down. You pause and then you squeeze through the chest. You're no longer just pushing a weight. You're feeling that chest do all the work through
through the entire period of time. You still see a lot of rotation with what I'm doing. And there you see the dumbbells drop and kind of rotate at the bottom and then rotate at the top. Very honestly, I'm doing that on purpose to make the chest do all the squeezing, make the chest do all that work all the way down and all the way up to the top. And that pause at that bottom, you're feeling for maximum tension across the chest, minimum tension in the shoulders, and just squeezing up with the chest. And that's what that half second pause gives you. When you get that big loaded feeling right there, now just start squeezing it back up through the chest. And that takes us from being a, a lifting exercise to a muscle building exercise. And again, it's about two to three seconds in each motion. I sometimes will go four or five seconds in a particular motion, but I'll be honest with you, that really exhausts you. You're not gonna be able, be able to do very many sets of that. Now let's talk about failure. Failure to me is not when you collapse and can no longer move, but it's almost like that. <laughs> uh, it's when you can no longer do a rep with good form. And by for focusing myself on doing these very slow motions and squeezing through those muscles, failure just means I can no longer do this motion at this speed with good form and I force myself to stop at that point. That way I don't get sloppy and, and I don't feel this in the joints and I don't get injured and that's our goal right now. But do trust me, even though I'm not jerking or swinging, this is true failure. Now you take and give yourself about three minutes and you come back and do it again. Three minutes on a compound exercise like chest, shoulders, legs, and then probably just two minutes on something like a bicep or tricep. Work for everything I got, I had to work for it. Yeah, living good a hell of a night, but I had to work for it.